repeatedly accused, incredibly accused, of sexual harassment by a lot of different women over the past several decades. Sharon Waxman spent a long time writing for the New York Times. She left to start The Wrap. She says the paper could have revealed Weinstein's alleged misdeeds all the way back in 2004, but spiked the piece instead. Sharon Waxman joins us tonight. Sharon, thanks for coming on. So, sure. uh, so to what extent did they have the story, are you saying, in 2004? Yeah, so first of all, just one nuance, which is uh, I said the piece was gutted, not spiked. The piece did run, but there was no reference to sexual anything or women in the piece. Um, And clearly, um, what the piece that Jody Cantor and Megan Toohey wrote last week was uh, really a great piece of reporting, a lot of work. I had a piece of that story uh, 13 years ago. And I was really uh, very disappointed that we weren't able to get it into print. What appeared in print was a piece that was buried on the inside of the culture section. And it's basically talked about a Miramax executive. Miramax was the company that Harvey and and Bob Weinstein had started uh, originally. And it was owned by the Disney company at that time. And it was talked about him being on the payroll, but then being fired. And it was kind of... Uh, a confusing story if you didn't understand that w- what the role that that person actually played was as a procurer for Harvey. That was what my sources had told me. And I had gone to Rome, uh, gone to Italy to find that story based on uh, a tips that I'd gotten. And I convinced my editor at the time to send me. And uh, then a new editor came in and that editor kind of inherited the story. And what appeared in print uh, after a great deal of pressure and pushback from Harvey Weinstein, as he always did when there was any negative right. story in the wings, uh, he pushed back really hard. Why did nobody write that story subsequently? I mean, it sounds, I knew nothing about this, but it sounds like from all the accounts I've read, this was widely known. Is that true? I would say that there were always rumors about sexual misconduct. I don't think that anybody knew that there was harassment of any kind inside the company. That was not the reputation. But actresses, uh, and there were stories out there, and there were many of us who tried to get them. I, in fact, did speak to one woman who had been paid off on that same trip in London, but she really wouldn't tell me anything that I could publish. So that part of that I, that I, that piece of the story that I got was not in any form because she, of course, had signed a non-disclosure. She was terrified of saying anything, but yet um, I knew she existed, but yeah. I didn't know exactly what had happened. You know, all I knew that there was a payoff, certainly nothing that I could put into print, but the other piece of the story that I had reported uh, could have started the conversation, could have exposed uh, a piece of it. Uh, and in fact, you know, the story the New York Times ultimately ran goes back 30 years. So you're talking about right. a lot of past uh, past offenses that could, that I think could have been perhaps. I mean, what I wonder is, you know, could some of this, the, the more recent, uh, you know, things that happened, might any of that have been avoided had the New York Times published what I had in my notebooks 13 years ago. I mean, I guess it's unknowable, but common sense suggests, of course, of course it could have been avoided. I mean, that's a big forum. If you print a story like that, you know, it has effects. I wish they'd run your piece. Sharon Waxman, thank you for explaining that to us. I appreciate it. Thanks. Dean Kane is an actor and producer, knows that world really well, and he joins us tonight. Dean, was this story a shock to you? Not in the least, Tucker. I mean, you, you hear rumors about this, that, the other thing. This was the worst kept secret in Hollywood. There's no question about it. I mean, it's hard for me to, I mean, as cynical as I am about the left, it's still <laughs> hard for me to believe that a community that's constantly talking about empowering women and the horrors of sexual harassment could have it at this scale. This is not like gray area stuff. This is ridiculous, out of control stuff, and not do anything about it for 30 years. But that's what happened. Well, yeah, Hollywood loves to wave the self-righteous finger and tell everybody what they should be doing and what's going on. But our, you know, this is not known as the bastion of morality here in Hollywood. People want a leg up. Harvey Weinstein is an extremely powerful man, uh, an absolute bully, and he clearly had an M.O. and something that he did. I mean, I, you, you were aware of it. Everybody knew. I, I wasn't someone that would be a target for him, but, you know, um, he, he, it's something that he had done for a long time. I know him socially. I've seen him in a couple situations. I, I'm not surprised at all that it's come out. I like to hear that some people are finally saying something. Rose McGowan tweeting, women of Hollywood, your silence is deafening. 
I agree with her finally, you know, and uh, at least one night, late night guy, John Oliver, made a joke, but everyone's been really quiet because Harvey is known to be a fighter. He's going after whoever he can go after, and he'll do it in the most vicious of ways, so people are scared. Just for our, our viewers who, who haven't read the series, and by the way, I think this stuff is usually more complicated than it gets credit for being, but this is not like he pressured a woman to have dinner with him. This is he exposed himself repeatedly to a bunch of different people identified by name for real stuff. So what I don't get is why Saturday Night Live, for example, <laughs> refused to do any joke about it at all. And then when asked, Lorne Michaels, the executive producer of the show, said it's, it's a New York thing, whatever that means. What does that mean, and why haven't they covered this? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I thought pre President Trump was from New York, uh, and they've done a yeah. couple pieces on him. Uh, yeah, I, th I think the deal is, is that um, you know, th there needed to be a huge public outcry like this, and there is finally this thing happening. This might be the thing that happens. I mean, his apology letter was ridiculous. That was absolutely ridiculous. Said he's going to fight the NRA now and, and, and go do that. I mean, I, it doesn't make any sense. He, he isn't arguing that things happened, that he, that, that he did things that were wrong, because there's too many people out there. People sign non-disclosure agreements, and he's done it with legal um, maneuvering, but it, it, there's too many people. The landslide is there. So I think this week you're going to see a whole different world. I think you're going to see Kimmel. I think you're going to see uh, Colbert. They're going to do bits and pieces on it. And I, and I think it's finally going to be out there in the open. And I hope people, I mean, there's so, such hypocrisy in this to, to scream about women's rights and all these things. And then, you know, and he is this big, you know, supporter of it, yet he's doing this. And it's, it's, it's clear, you know, you see the MO, you see what he's doing. Bring him up to the hotel of room. Course. Watch me take a shower. It's, it's, it's awful. So I think the most striking part for me is in his explanation letter, it wasn't exactly an apology letter, he talks mostly about himself yeah, and his personal journey and his therapist and working through his issues. And I thought, this is the single most self-involved person I've ever come across. Is that what the culture's like out there, where you just like talk about yourself without <laughs> ceasing? Well, let me tell you about me, Tucker. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It, it is. It's Hollywood. It's it's Hollywood. That's what happens. It, uh, people are very self-absorbed out here, um, and they're worried about their their own position and and their their grasp on power. You know, a lot of actors, boy, if they're not in the in the spotlight right now, they're forgotten about, and they don't want that to happen. Uh, it's the same with producers. You know, Harvey's not a filmmaker. He's a producer. He's not right. directing films and doing things like that. He's a, he's a producer, and he had a lot of power. He could make or break your career. So um, he just became. Came this this power mogul people would just excuse his behavior because they wanted to get ahead it's it's that that same old it's Hollywood story pretty disgusting Dean Kane you're a brave man to talk about that in public thank you for doing it I appreciate it <laughs>